Well, it is 6 p.m. on June 20th, 2023, and we welcome you all to your city council. We're going to get started. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Roll call, please. Alter? Here. Burgess? Here. Dunn? Here. Harmson? Here. Taylor? Here. Teague? Here. Thomas? Here. All right. Item number two is proclamations. 2A is Parks and Recreation Month. Whereas parks and recreation is an integral part of our communities throughout this count country, including Iowa City. And whereas parks and recreation promotes health and wellness, improving the physical and mental health of people who live near parks. And whereas parks and recreation promotes time spent in nature, which positively impacts mental health by increasing cognitive performance and well being and alleviating illnesses such as depression, attention deficit disorders, and Alzheimer's. And whereas parks and recreation encourages physical activities by providing space for activities designed to promote active lifestyles. And whereas parks and recreation programming and education activities such as out of school time programming, youth sports and environmental education are critical to childhood development and whereas parks and recreation increases a community's economic prosperity through increased pro uh, property values, expansion of the local tax base, job training, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas park and recreation is fundamental to the environment well-being of our community. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and whereas Iowa City recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. <coughs> now, therefore, I, Bruce Teague, Mayor of Iowa City, do hereby proclaim the month of July to be Parks and Recreation Month in Iowa City. And receiving this uh, proclamation today, as Alex, and yes, so great. Thank you. Mayor Teague and City Council. So my name is Alex Hackman and I have the distinct honor and privilege of serving as part of the Parks and Rec Commission in the city of Iowa City. And I humbly accept this proclamation on behalf of the Parks and Rec Commission, the Parks and Rec Department, and from on behalf of the citizens of Iowa City. So a quote that I love is uh, by Frank Lloyd Wright says, I go to nature every day for inspiration in the day's work. And I hope each day that you visit one of the many parks in the city of Iowa City with over 50 parks, green spaces, and nature areas. So the Parks and Forestry Division provide and maintain adequate open spaces, uh, parks, and trails for the residents of Iowa City. And over 99% of Iowa City residents live within a half mile of open space uh, in uh, this wonderful city of ours. So I invite you as well uh, during the month of July to visit a park, to go out and explore, and to maybe visit a park that you normally haven't gone to before. And so we are extremely blessed in the Iowa City area with so many uh, parks as well as uh, wonderful recreation programming as well, and encourage you to uh, take part in those as well. Also in, the, in celebration of the Parks and Rec uh, Month, uh, the City of Iowa City Parks and Rec Department will be launching a month-long uh, sporting equipment drive throughout all of July. All new and gently used sporting goods uh, received from the public will be collected by staff and redistributed to individuals, families, and organizations that need these uh, types of items the most. And we understand that not having access to proper sporting equipment can be a barrier to recreation. And this is one way in which we can address the issue. So you can dust off any old gear that you may have and look out soon for an announcement uh, coming on that. But once again, thank you uh, for all that you do in helping preserve our natural and green spaces in Iowa City and for all that you do in support of the Parks and Rec program. Thank you.
Alex, and thank you for serving as chair of that commission. 2B is Waste and Recycling Workers Week. Whereas according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the eradication of many diseases in the Western world is due in large part to higher public sanitation standards resulting from effective garbage disposal. And whereas the proper collection and disposal of waste, recycling and organic waste are integral to preventing litter and dump heap, <laughs> heaps. And whereas the city of Iowa City values and celebrates dozens of workers in the public and private trash, recycling, and yard waste and organics industry in our community. And whereas the city of Iowa City promotes environmental sustainable, a sustainability through reducing waste and increasing recycling and composting. Now therefore I, Bruce Teague, Mayor of Iowa City, here do by proclaim the week of June 17th through June 23rd, 2023, as Waste and Recycling Workers Week in Iowa City and urge our community members to recognize the value, the valuable role that collection and removal services for trash, recycling, and yard waste play in our daily lives. And receiving this is Resource Management Superintendent Jennifer Jordan. Thank you, Mayor T. Good evening, Council. As the Mayor mentioned, I'm Jen Jordan, the Resource Management Superintendent for the City of Iowa City. Our division within Public Works has about 36 employees, and we pick up trash, recycling, and organics, including food waste, which is a premier service in the state and across the nation. We get, I'll brag for just a second, we get calls all the time from other communities across the country asking how we do what we do. So we, I, I encourage um, all of us to look at the services that not only Resource Management provides, but that Public Works provides on a daily basis, and be really proud of those. So thank you for this honor. Have a good evening. Great. We're on to our consent agenda, which is <coughs> items three through eight. Could I get a motion to approve, please? So moved, Burgess. Second, Taylor. All right, anyone from the public like to address this topic? Anything on our consent agenda? Say no one in person or online. Council discussion? I, I actually have one thing. Um, I, I recently received a, a question about this that I, I thought I knew the answer to, but I wanted to check with. Um, for our uh, liquor licenses, are we shall issue unless otherwise, or what is the situation there? Oh, no, we're not shall, uh, but we need to adhere to the standards set by the state. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, we do have, uh, you know, we can consider whether there's been compliance with local laws and, and that kind of thing, but um, we have to be careful uh, over why we say no. In the past, there have been occasions when we have uh, denied a liquor license renewal and been overturned uh, by the state uh, because they didn't think our reasons were sufficient. So that can happen. Is that in usually an administrative review or is it a uh, litigation? Administrative. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think how to answer that. Uh, we litigate in front of an ALJ sure. and that can be appealed to the district court. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Teague? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Motion passes seven to zero. Item number nine is community comment. This is an opportunity for folks to come and speak on anything that is not on our agenda. You'll be allowed up to three minutes at this time, so you're welcome. And also, this is an opportunity for you all to speak to the council. We are not able to engage with you. Yes. Mr. Mayor, is it okay if we talk to a little bit about why we are not able to engage? Um, the, the, the main reason we're not able to engage with um, public is because of uh, we have to notify the public on any topic that we're going to discuss. The, the, I just want to clarify, the reason I say that is um, we've had a lot of people in the past that I've been aware of that have been wanting that, and I think We for can't go into discussion now. Okay, understood. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Hi. 
Can I start now? Yes. Hi. Uh, good evening, all. I would like to start off by reading Shelter's House mission statement. Our mission is to provide safe shelter and help people improve the quality of their lives as they move towards homelessness. And they do this by putting you in areas where there's nothing but death and destruction. All they give us is death and despair. Last week, they found T-Bone dead in his apartment. All they give us is drugs, alcoholism, and suicide. Feelings of doubt, helplessness, grief, frustration, despair, uncertainty, and fear. They, sit us, they don't set us up for independence and prosperity. They set us up for failure and doom. When some of us just want to live out the remainders of our lives and be happy. I don't even feel good going home. When I leave here, I don't feel good going home. I just got a new water heater in April of 2023. The last time my water heater was replaced was in 1963. In 1963, I was nine years old. I have holes and molds in my wall where I can stick my finger to my wall to the outside of my wall. With $11.1 .1 million that was given to Shelter House, I could cure homelessness problem. But you would hold me accountable for every dollar. So why is Shelter House with all their managers falling short? Homeless veterans should not be in our vocabulary at all. There should be no such thing as a homeless veteran in America or anywhere. I would take every family, man, woman, and child, veteran off the street with counseling and God. I mean, we are going to need divine intervention in, in getting to where we want to get in life. On May 28th, I lost a friend in Devonport when that building collapsed. It was my friend's son. And when they showed it, all you could see was Brandon's clothes. His bed was gone. And since that incident happened in Devonport, more cities in Iowa are, are taking heed to this. Iowa City, are viewing these dilapidated, condemned buildings more seriously, except Iowa City. And what this city is doing in conjunction with Shelter House is similar to a building collapsing on Thank top you. of us. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else like to speak on a topic that is not on our agenda? Seeing no one in person or online, we're going to move on to our um, item number 10A, 2023 City of Iowa City Parking Garages Maintenance and Repair, Resolution Approving Project Manual and Estimate of Costs for the Construction of the 2023 City of Iowa City Parking Garages Maintenance and Repair Project, Establishing Amount of Bid, Security to Accompany Each Bid, Directing City Clerk to Post Notice to Bidders, and Fixing Time and Place for Receipt of Bids, I'm going to open the public hearing and welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Ethan Yoder. I'm with the engineering department uh, and I'm here to talk about the 2023 City of Iowa City Parking Garages Maintenance and Repair Project for this year. Uh, a little quick background for why we chose what we chose. Um, the maintenance for this year was chosen based on the five year parking garage maintenance master plan that was put together by THP. Um, and this year we chose to do the stair towers at Dubuque Street and Tower Place parking garages. Um, we're going to be putting down some new membrane, uh, concrete crack repair, painting the stairs, uh, stair tread replacement, and spall repair. Uh, some of the mechanical and electrical items uh, in Tower Place and Chauncey Swan and Court Street parking garages, uh, the stair towers will be receiving getting new exhaust fans as well as new thermostats to go with the exhaust fans. And at Harrison Street, we're doing an infrared scanning of the electrical equipment. Uh, the estimated cost for the project is $184,500. Uh, the bid letting is July 18th with award of August 1st. 
and it will start September 5th and completion should be this fall winter. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone from the public like to address this topic? If so, please come forth. Seeing no one, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Can I get a motion to approve, please? So moved, Alter. Second, Burgess. Council discussion. Roll call, please. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Teague? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Alter? Yes. Motion passes seven to zero. Item 10B, 2023 Dubuque Street, McAllister Boulevard and Landfill Seating. Resolution approving project manual and a state an estimate of cost for the construction of the 2023 Dubuque Street, McAllister Boulevard and Landfill Seating Project. Establishing amount of bid security to accompany each bid. Directing city clerk to post notice to bidders and fixing time and place for receipt of bids. I'm gonna open the public hearing and welcome. Good evening, Mayor and, and Council. Uh, Scott Silver's Assistant City Engineer. Uh, today I'm gonna to provide you a brief overview of the 2023 to 2025 seating project. Uh, starting off, there are three uh, seating locations for this project. Uh, the first one being McAllister Boulevard um, from South Gilbert Street to Sycamore Street. Uh, the second one is Dubuque Street uh, from Brown Street to Taft Speedway. And then lastly, the third one is at the Iowa City and Landfill and Recycling Center. For some background information, uh, McAllister Boulevard and Dubuque Street were constructed as a part of the city's capital improvement program in 2020 and 2016 through 2018, respectively. On both projects, existing topsoil was stripped, salvaged, and reused. Despite the seeding and our siding completed within the prescribed spring and fall uh, windows as per the project specifications, it didn't properly get established and is in poor condition, as you can see by the photos on the slide. This could have been from a variety of reasons. Uh, however, it is likely due to existing topsoil, uh, the existing topsoil being overly compacted during placement, as well as the absence of organics and nutrients. Uh, at the Iowa City Landfill and Recycling Center, there are areas within the uh, cells FY09 and FY18 that are no longer receiving waste and need final service restoration and seating. Additionally, a temporary material storage area for the construction of the new FY23 cell, which is currently under construction, needs final service restoration and seating. For the project overview, uh, the project generally includes uh, soil quality restoration, uh, overseeding and fertilizing on McAllister Boulevard, from Gilbert Street to Sycamore Street and Dubuque Street from Brown Street to Taft Speedway. Also included in the project is seeding, fertilizing, and mulching of disturbed areas of the Iowa City uh, landfill that are no longer being used for solid waste disposal or for the construction of the new uh, FY23 cell. The estimated construction cost for the project is $240,000. Uh, we are hosting the public hearing tonight which is June 20th. Uh, the bid opening is July 5th. Uh, we're planning to bring this back to you for award at the July 11th meeting. And then construction is from August uh, 2023 through December of 2025. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I just have a question. Um, sure. Based on um, when you were talking about potential reasons or likely reasons why it didn't take, um, is that mitigated in this iteration where they'll make sure that there's more nutrients yep. and that yep, that's the plan and that's why and sorry that no. that's why that it, it the project is going to extend over a couple of years because gotcha. we're going to do some some you know we're going to do the SQR one year and then the next the following years we're going to do a couple applications of fertilizer to try to get it where it needs to be perfect thanks yeah thank you yeah thank you Anyone from the public like to address this topic? Mm -hmm. 
seeing no one in person or in, or online, I'm going to close the public hearing. Can I get a motion to approve, please? So moved, Harmson. Second, Taylor. Council discussion. Roll call, please. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Teague? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. Item 10C, Building Code Update, Ordinance Amending Title 17, Chapter 1, Building Code by Adopting the International Building Code 2021 Edition, including Appendix K, and the International Residential Code 2021 Edition, including Appendix F and Appendix J, and providing for certain amendments thereof, adopting Section 103.6, of the Iowa Code and Section 105.4 of the Code of Iowa to provide for the protection of the health, welfare, and safety of the residents of Iowa City, Iowa, and Title 17, Chapter 12, to clarify the process for building code appeals. This is the second consideration, and staff is requesting expedited action. Mayor, I move that the rule requiring that ordinances must be considered and voted on for passage at two council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed be suspended, that the second consideration and vote be waived, and that the ordinance be voted on for final passage at this time. Moved by Taylor. Second. Seconded by Dunn. All right. Anyone from the public like to address this topic? It's the, it's the building code update. Yep. Seeing and hearing from no one. Council discussion. Roll call, please. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Teague? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Done? Yes. Motion passes, seven to zero. Can I get a, get a motion to pass and adopt? So move, done. Second. Second. Oh, go ahead. Second. Alter. All right. Roll call, please. Taylor. Yes. Teague. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Alter. Yes. Burgess. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Harmson. Yes. Motion passes seven to zero. Item 10D, fire code update, ordinance amending title seven, chapter one, fire prevention and protection by adopting the 2021 edition of the International Fire Code to regulate and govern the safeguarding of life and property from fire, explosion, life safety risks, or health hazards. This is second consideration and staff is requesting expedited action. Mayor, I move that the rule requiring that ordinances must be considered and voted on for passage at two council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed be suspended, that the second consideration and vote be waived, and that the ordinance be voted on for final passage at this time. Moved by Taylor. Second. Alter. All right. Anyone from the public like to address this topic? Seeing and hearing from no one in person or online. Council discussion. Roll call, please. Teague? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. Could I get a motion to pass and adopt? So moved. Dunn. Second, Thomas. Roll call, please. Thomas? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Teague? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. Item 10E, Petty Cabs and Taxi Cabs, Ordinance Amending Title 5 entitled Business and License Regulations, Chapter 2 entitled Taxi Cabs to define petty cabs separately from taxi cabs. <coughs> Can I get a, get a motion to give first consideration? So moved. Alter. Second. Burgess. All right, and we're going to invite our city clerk to give us some comments. Good evening. Um, so the uh, ordinance that's on the agenda tonight um, and the city code review for taxi cabs and pedicabs was initially prompted by an email from a pedicab business owner requesting changes to the code. Um, and while staff was considering the recommended changes, we concluded it would be more clear to separate out those two parts and have pedicabs be in a separate section of the code. 
Um, the ordinance moves all the pedicab provisions to a new section and will essentially not change those requirements except for the following four changes. Um, pedi pedicab businesses should not be required to maintain manifest logs. Uh, they should not be required to have an office telephone number answerable 24 seven. Drivers in training do not need prior approval of the city but cannot transport passengers while they're training. And businesses should not be required to have a unique color scheme but the pedicabs need to look alike for purposes of identification by the public. Um, the ordinance also prohibits the use of electronic cigarettes by drivers and passengers in taxi cabs and pedicabs. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I have an odd question. It had to do with the fourth point that you, about not being required to have a unique color scheme, uh, but they need to look alike for purposes of identification by the public. Is it possible for there to be individual petty vehicles that just some person could use on the ped mall? I guess that I'm just... Well, they can't be on the ped mall. Right. Um, or, no, I'm sorry, I, and I recognize that the pedicabs can't be either. Sorry about that. Um, I guess I'm just... Yeah, it's just a point of curiosity because it was sort of like to identify that these are businesses as opposed to oh, my I neighbor. Oh, I see what you're saying, like a personal right. that has one. Well, I, I guess I want to add to that. What if someone wanted a petty um, banana boat <laughs> or something? It, it, you know, it's a petty cab, but it looks like a banana boat or something. I, so because you're saying they need, they need to look alike. Right, within the, own, within the one business. So oh, okay. if they have okay. two pedicabs, they should look similar. And they typically have signage and a phone number. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. But does okay. that help? Yeah, I, I just truly was like, so I didn't realize but that there John could be Smith sort of like a one. personal use pedicab. <laughs> Sorry. It yeah, for paying customers only. Right. So, question. Um, this is also just a curiosity thing. Like <laughs> yeah. uh, the 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 vapes. Uh, where where does that come from? That just seemed out of Eric can hop in on left that one. field for me at the <laughs> well, very end. Uh, so we we treat um, as a city. We have generally treated. Uh, um, electronic cigarettes, um, you know, vape products, the same as tobacco, for the same reasons as tobacco, right? I mean, it's secondhand smoke and you don't want to have exposure. We don't allow them around baseball fields, for example, in city parks and, and that kind of thing for all the same reasons. And so uh, there was, as, as city staff was reviewing the pedicab um, ordinance amendment, um, you know, oftentimes we look at them more broadly. There's some issue is brought to us to consider and we say, well, as, as long as we're working on this ordinance, let's think of other things that we might add to it. And so this is one of those. To be clear, the um, the resident uh, or the person who is interested in making the changes did not raise that, but that was at the staff level that we decided, like, you know what, we should probably address this too. We address, you know, uh, that with taxi cabs. And, and so we thought it would be appropriate just to make that change across the board. So I got, I got a little bit of a follow-up question sure. on that. I mean, so when talking about using an e-cigarette, and again, this is all curiosity. I mean, I'm not pressing. Um, but I mean, are we talking about, you know, using on their shift? Are we talking about using while they're pedaling, which is clearly dangerous? Or, <laughs> uh, you know, what's what's your thought there? Like, just for some clarity as to what we're doing here. Sure. So the language says, no driver shall smoke or use an electronic cigarette while transporting a passenger. Mm -hmm. So I think that may address your first question. Is it on their shift? Well, no, not if they, I mean, they can do it if they're not transporting a passenger. Um, so it would only be <clears throat> when there's someone else who could be unintentionally, um, you know, sucking in the secondhand smoke, so sure. to speak. And I'm sorry, I've forgotten the second part of your question. Uh, I think you answered. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. The second part was, are we talking about while they're riding the bike? Oh. Which is, you clearly answered. Okay. Yeah. Great. So just another sort of clarification, Kelly, since this is fairly new to the area, and if they don't have any sort of signage, do people hail them like they hail a cab in the bigger cities? Or how do they contact as, just as they're riding by and people will say, yeah, hey? They, they can. There is a, like I said, there is a, they do have to have signage. They have to have a business name okay. um, and a phone number on the sides of, of the pedicab. But okay. yeah, I think a lot of them are just hailed as they're, they're going by. Okay. 
Any other questions for Kelly? All right, anyone from the public like to address this topic? If so, please come forth this, this, at this time. There is a sign-in sheet at the table. Um, and I, just for future reference, there are sign-in stickers on the back that people can uh, place in a basket up here. Please state your name and city you're from. Uh, ben Snyder, I live in Cedar Rapids, but I own Pedal Power Pedicab Company. Sorry, I don't have my hearing aids in, so half of that was muffled, my fault for not wearing my hearing aids tonight. But um, I'm standing here just in case you have any questions or anything that I missed out on. Um, but I would say that um, I'm licensed in Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, Coralville, and Des Moines. And uh, some of the variances uh, in the ordinances vary a little bit. I would say there's some municipalities that probably could do more and some that could do less. And so uh, I sent the council just some of my recommendations that could make it easier on the city, um, but some things that would make sense to separate us from uh, traditional taxi cabs that are cars that have different capabilities or, or different sizes or uh, in one instance, like just the lettering size that a pedicab may not have room for compared to a traditional taxi cab and uh, other instances. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, sorry, I missed out on half of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else like to address uh, this topic? Seeing no one in person or online, council discussion. I think it just makes sense to separate them out. I kind of see it like a bicycle versus a car uh, to have separate ordinances, and it just, just kind of makes sense to me, I think. Roll call, please. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Teague? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. Item number 10F, City Park Pool Professional Service Agreement. Resolution approving, author, authorizing, and directing the mayor to execute and the city clerk to attest an agreement by and between the city of Iowa City and Williams Associate Architects LTD of Atasca, Illinois, to provide engineering consultant services for the city park pool project. Can I get a motion to approve, please? So moved, Alter. Second, Harmson. All right, and welcome. Hello. So my name is Brad Barker. I'm the Recreation Superintendent with the Parks and Recreation Department. And I'm here today to talk about um, this council action report before you, which would be the authorization to proceed forward with professional consulting services for City Park Pool. With City Park Pool having aged nearly 75 years, the current condition of the pool's infrastructure and equipment necessitates a direction on whether repair or replacement is needed in order to ensure a viable facility for the future of the community. Um, to provide some context on a few of the issues currently experienced at the pool, um, one of the primary concerns there is the loss of water that we're experiencing. On average, we're losing 30,000 gallons of water per day. Um, every year, our staff takes measures to um, caulk the cracks, and um, do basin painting and try to, try to do what they can to uh, hold off on all of that water being lost, but we still do lose an average of 30,000 gallons per day. And mind you, that is treated water, chemically treated water as well. So that is some, um, that's, a, that's a cost that we, that we have for that water. Um, the main pool gutter grading is worn and abrasive. Every year we get more complaints about um, people having minor scrapes and abrasions due to the due to the gutters, and then the pool house structure and mechanical equipment is deficient and not constructed to meet modern employee safety and patron accommodation expectations. Uh, the bathhouse is just older; wasn't initially designed with that in mind. Um, so we, with this project, we um, interviewed four consulting teams. They submitted their proposals, and we inter interviewed all four teams that submitted the proposals. Um, and each firm had the opportunity to tour City Park Pool prior to filling for the season. So they were all able to go out there and see the pool in its dry state um, as they were coming in for their interviews. Um, the four firms were narrowed down to two after the interviews, at which point some additional questions were asked of those two firms and clarification sought in order to fully assess each firm's sustainability or suitability for the project. 
Based on this process, it is the recommendation of city staff to proceed forward with Williams Architect Group for this project. They simply were the most qualified due to their comprehensive experience with aquatic projects and the strength and depth of their subconsultant team. They were able to detail similar repair projects to older pool shells and replacement projects where the new design was able to pay homage even to the past history of the pools that they um, were creating new. They have a solid understanding of the public input received to, to date and they will bring the awareness into the project and by helping to ensure success through finding common ground with the community. The subconsultants for the project are, in addition to Williams Architect, is Councilman Hunziker Aquatic Design, Hitchcock Landscape Architects, IMEG Engineers, Barry Dunn Consulting, and the University of Illinois, should a statistically valid survey be needed in this project. I want to emphasize that this consultant agreement is a two-phased agreement where the findings of the first will determine the direction of the second phase. The scope of service for the first phase will begin with the facility condition assessment phase. This assessment will take into consideration patron safety, maintenance operations, ADA compliance, and life cycle assessments for the pool components, including cost estimates for repairs. All systems, including pool shell integrity, pool filtration, sanitation and circulation, mechanical, electrical, plumbing and architectural systems will be evaluated. The cost required to maintain or replace the system that falls short of administrative code, current industry standards, operational challenges, or exceed life ex expectancies will be reported. Some of the evaluation tasks that will require dry conditions, such as concrete core samples, um, were already completed prior to the season and will be assessed by the consultant. All in all, this first phase is a very data-driven, very data-heavy phase. Based on the findings of this phase one, the consultants will then recommend later this summer either repair or replacement and will present the report of current conditions and analysis of viability to you all. City Council will then decide whether or not to proceed with this recommendation. So then the ball will be in your court to decide based on the, the guidance and the recommendations and the data that you receive on what the next step would be. If and only if council decides to replace rather than repair, the project would move on to phase two as outlined. This would be the conceptual design phase and a robust, and a robust schedule of public input and a statistically valid survey are included in the contract in order to inform your decision-making process regarding the design of a new facility. The plan for public engagement is very similar to what was presented to the city council in May during discussion of the RFQ that was to be advertised. However, an additional public input open house to be held at the beginning of the design phase has been added to this contract based on that guidance should council elect to replace the pool. Uh, the timeline for the first phase is investigate facility conditions in July, report of current condition and analysis of viability uh, in August, and then the city council presentation in September. And then the, if that decision is to move forward into phase two, the timeline for the second phase components would occur September through October of this year. Repair or replacement through the construction of a new facility will be targeted to occur after the 2024 season and is expected to require a full closure in 2025. Do you have any questions for me? I guess I have, I have a question for you, um, which mostly stems from the, the concerns of some of the members of the community that I've heard. Sure. Um, and a uh, re repeated one is this concern with uh, the same consultant sure. addressing both phases and how there can be a perception, uh, whether, you know, r real or, you know, just in fact a perception uh, that a consultant would be incentivized to recommend a certain outcome uh, for financial gain. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that you might be aware of those types yep. of concerns. Yep. Would, would you be able to speak to uh, your concern in that regard, your sure. lack of concern in that regard and where that comes from? Sure. Yep, so um, just as a reminder, the, when, when the RFQ was put out, it was put out um, to have one consulting firm complete that project in phase one and phase two if necessary. So that, it, that is the way that it was advertised. Um, 
I, I personally don't have any concerns about that. I think, especially given the, the scale of the project here, the first phase is about $11,000, $12,000, um, and then the, the second phase would be about $88,000. And there are six subconsult or one main consultant and five subconsultants on this project, and so that would be divvied out amongst that. With that first phase being so data driven and data heavy, it's are your pool are your are your pipes leaking? Where are they leaking? How much water are you losing through them? Is your deck um, deteriorating? Where is it deteriorating? Um, what's the age of your mechanical equipment? A lot of that is very like matter of fact, and so I I don't especially given the the professional standards of the engineering firms, and when they bid on these projects, the expectations that they are to uphold. I, I don't I don't see any any issues with that. Thank you. Just to follow up on that, and thank you for the yeah. the answer. Um, there was a suggestion that um, there would be an independent engineer apart from um, these consultant firms. Is that has that ship sailed? Is that something that is possible um, to to maybe even have as a I don't know as a an additional set of engineering data? Um. Sure, yeah, that, that could be a possibility. Um, in terms of uh, costs for that project, I would imagine it would probably be similar to the phase one cost if you were to have two firms come in um, and kind of see how that data compares. So it would, it would increase, Double. yeah, it would increase the cost of the project, but um, I guess if you're looking for certainty on the, on the data that you're seeing, if you have two firms that are reporting back similar results or you know if, it, yeah. if they're way off then, uh, then I, that's a different matter right, right but right um but yeah that that could be a possibility okay kind of in conjunction with councillor dunn's question i mean obviously there's no doubt that there is an issue i mean thirty thousand mm -hmm. gallons a day is a lot so obviously there's an issue there uh, but the, you're you're saying that you you don't see any issue with that that you think that this company would play equal weight to uh, repair versus replace and would they be basing that on the cost of of how each of those would pan out right so that would be that would be the report that you would receive so you would get the list of deficiencies and then the cost to bring that up to code and compliance um, so you would really have that data to compare so even if their recommendation was let's build a new pool, let's say they were to say that, and that would be the recommendation to you, you also would have that data to show, well, here's the alternative if we were to repair the pool, here's what it would cost, um, and where does that get you in terms of what we currently have, kind of an upgraded version of that versus uh, what a new pool might cost us. Yep, so you would receive all that information in that report. Um, our consultants would be um, presenting on their findings here to you, um, and then you would have that information to make your decision. A really quick question. Can you remind us again of what the average lifespan of an outdoor pool is, a, like a large um, Olympic size? I don't, I don't have the specific numbers on that, but I would say probably 30 years. Thanks. Hearing no more questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. So I know there are some folks that want to respond uh, from pub from the public. If I can get a show of hands in person and online, who wants to speak to this agenda item? Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna allow uh, three minutes uh, for comments. So I'll ask that you come up and give your name um, and the city you're from. Welcome. Hey Bruce, uh, Jerry Prothero with Iowa City. Um, <coughs> you saw by the few hands that we're organize our, organizing ourselves a little bit better so um, to use your time efficiently. So I'm representing City Park Pool, Back to the Future, as you might guess. Um, we ask that if the members that came to please stand, um, just to show the representation. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. This is fantastic. Um, you might be seeing some blue signs popping up around town, and those keep coming. That we're on our third order of those. But first, I wanted to start with some thank yous. 
Um, I, I was sorry to see that Jeff and Julie aren't here. Um, I wanted to thank them for meeting with us. Um, also, several council members have met with the, the group as well. Thank you for doing that. You know, we're learning how to engage with you, and um, it's been sort of a fun process, to be honest. Um, we are learning. Um, and I, I also want to say that we're feeling heard. Um, I, I'm seeing wording that shows me that what we are saying is making its way into the, the contracts, and watch that time. I, I don't think I have to say this, but I'm going to briefly tell you what um, City Park Pool Back to the Future is about. So we looked at the current pool and, and what communities were being served by that pool. And our vision details and the City Park Pool Back to the Future group agrees that a new or renovated pool at City Park must, at a minimum, meet the user needs of communities currently served. And that's a pretty high bar. It's a pretty amazing pool that serves a lot of people, a lot of communities. I'm going to turn over the floor now and save a little time to um, one of our members, Rick, and he'll tell you his story. Great. Thank you. And a welcome. Oh, thank please, you very much. Yes. Please state your name and city you're from, and there's also a sign-in sheet there. And for anyone else that want to speak, there is a sticker in the back if you want to pre-fill that out. Welcome. Thank you for having me. My name is Rick Spear from Iowa City. Um, I, I'm here because I've been swimming laps at City Park probably since the 80s. But um, in addition to that, um, I'm now the father of um, two young swimmers who um, the youngest recently passed the deep end test. So um, I have two going off the diving board this, this year. Um, and a, and a lifetime ago, I started um, swimming for fitness after being employed by my local YMCA. And uh, at that time, my duties included um, driving the bus, being a site coordinator for a, a day camp. And so I was the guy bringing busloads of kids to pools and beaches um, all over Polk County. And, uh, and, and I developed a great appreciation for, for these spaces, for our community, for the, for the young people and the people my age um, that they serve. And, and you know, what we're talking about is, is so many different community members who um, appreciate what this pool offers us. And, and I think this is more important now than ever because we know in Iowa, the water quality of our freshwater is not what it used to be. I, if I was driving that bus today, I don't know if I'd make the same stops. Um, and, and so having a safe, uh, clean place to swim and recreate and just be a community is more important than ever. Um, we, we are advocating you know, just for um, a continued role in the process and in, in, um, having the opportunity to give community input. Um, we, um, we have made some proposals about small group meetings um, being included with members of the um, consulting firms and the rec staff to, to just make sure that as broad a spectrum of the, the population that uses and appreciates and, and loves City Park Pool has, has a chance to um, be at tables, small tables, we hope, <laughs> small, small tables. Um, but that, that, that's why we're here. We love City Park Pool. We love being part of that community. And um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Got it. <laughs> 
Good Welcome. evening. My name is Dan Katalinich, 418 Fifth Avenue. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, first off, I'd like to say I appreciated uh, and recognized the language that was in the agenda that referred to public engagement as part of the scope of service. So uh, that that is what our group is all about. And thanks, Jerry and Sue, for getting uh, this going. Uh, CPPB2F. Uh, is is our group, and we're really focused on uh, preserving uh, the wonderful city park pool. And I looked at Williams and Associates' uh, website and noted one of the projects I thought that was very similar uh, to city park pool. It was a, a facility that was built in the 60s in uh, Morton Grove, Illinois, uh, Oriole Park Pool, and. The phrase that caught my eye uh, that they mentioned about that project was honor the legacy. And that's really what we're talking about with City Park Pool is honoring that legacy. Uh, when Julie was hired, she, she was quoted in, uh, in the Press Citizen in January 2016. She said, parks and recreation facilities and services are a real extension of what the community is all about, unquote. And I think what this community about is about is preservation and recognizing our history. And we have an incredible aquatic legacy in this city. And uh, I think our own uh, uh, Historic Preservation Commission really echoed what uh, Williams and Associates had to say uh, about honoring the legacy when they said City Park Pool is part of our shared heritage here in Iowa City and that we should pursue updates uh, and repairs, not an entirely uh, new design. And uh, we talked about, um, you all talked about uh, repairing and replacing, but that does not exclude honoring the legacy and recognizing that the design of City Park Pool, uh, I call it uh, the big water in the oak savanna. And I think that is the critical element that, that we're talking about. The facility has served people very well, and we do not need to change that design. It's an, it's an incredible and iconic part of Iowa City. And uh, we look forward to engaging uh, in this process uh, with council and uh, with Williams and Associates to honor the legacy uh, that was established with the uh, original design of City Park Pool and serving our citizens far into the future with that uh, beautiful design that was created uh, 75 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Say by the bell. No. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, my name is Dennis Beffler, and uh, I've lived in Iowa City for 16 years, and uh, I'm an avid swimmer. With, I see a lot of my friends here, so it's like the, the morning crowd at the pool. Um, I just want to say a couple things about how awesome our pool is. Um, one thing is great. We have 20 to 30 swimmers most mornings, most, most days at lunch. Uh, if you don't believe me, come by sometime and check it out. I would actually uh, really appreciate if members of this group would come and see how the pool is used. Um, some of the proposals I've seen, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare any remarks, so I'm going to just ramble. Um, <laughs> Uh, some of the ideas that I've heard presented don't have as many lap lanes, and so that's just one thing I'm really going to be pushing for is, hey, the pool gets used a lot. We, we need space to swim. Uh, I love the, the opening remarks about um, the value of Parks and Rec and how we're honoring Parks and Rec Month, and I just thought it was so perfect. Like, we need to be outside. We need a clean place to swim. Uh, I recently injured myself, and swimming was like my huge rehab, and I need vitamin D so that I can heal my bones, and being outside and swimming since I can't run anymore has been just a huge um, help. I, I would also say that if we're going to be able to repair this pool, which, which I believe is possible, we wouldn't have to lose it for a season. I think if we're creative with the way that we bid the work in the off season, things can be repaired. We can look at doing a, a second building to replace the older building. Uh, just like Kinnick Stadium, we, we built a north, north end zone in the off season. Uh, we could do the same, same thing with the, the park pool there. We could make it a priority, uh, make sure that the work gets done during the winter months when we can't be swimming outside, and uh, creatively maintain that pool so we don't have to not, not use it for a season. 
Um, like I said, I didn't prepare anything, so thank you for your time. Really thank appreciate you. It. Anyone else like to address this topic? Seeing no one in person or online, council discussion. I appreciated hearing the phrase honor the legacy and hearing that that came from this company. I, I would hope that they would uh, uh, see that with our city park pool too, that, that it truly is a legacy. It's like somebody asked about the lifespan of, of a pool. Uh, it's been here a long time and it does have a lot of history and Iowa City is full of history and, and I, I, I believe we need to honor that and, and I would hope that this company truly does believe that about honoring the legacy. One of the things just following on the heels of that <clears throat> is that, you know, I think of, um, I think of these consultants, I mean, this is their professional reputation on the line, right? And so I think that one of the things that reassures me is that something that has other projects similar that they're touting on their website and that they are engaged in nationally, I think should give us all a great deal of confidence. Um, I know that there's been concern about the two phases and depending on what the data-driven phase is, that will drive then the other. And, and I know that there's the temptation in fact, I was like, okay, I'm going to think this through and to say, sure, maybe there's going to be wanting to put a thumb on that thing a little bit to, to drive. When I stop and back up a little bit, I just think this is a national company's reputation on the line, and their names would be mud if they did that. So I just, I sort of thought this through, and I was like, that's not how good companies operate, right? So... You know, do I know them personally? No, and frankly, I think that's a good thing, right? <laughs> um, but I just wanted to raise that because I think that this has been a really fraught um, process up till now, and I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who are in the room, and then also I know your numbers are even more than this, and that you are merely representatives um, for continuing to be part of the process. It's been messy, it's been painful at times, but I appreciate you continuing to reach out. I've had some really good conversations and those are not one and done. Um, but I just wanted to sort of put this out there that like I think that as we move forward with the consultants, um, I think we can rest assured that their professional reputations are at stake about the kind of investigation that they do and therefore than whatever they find, right? That they're not predetermining what the second phase should be. This would really be bad for their reputations. So I just wanted to put that out there. I was sort of, for anybody who's had coffee with me, you know I process out loud. So this was a little bit of that, right? But I just wanted to share it in case there are people who, that, that would be helpful to hear as well. Um, the other thing too is just, I also was incredibly, um, I don't, I'm pleased to see that, in fact, the kind of language that your group is part of your mission statement about making it as um, available and accommodating as it is now, plus more, um, that it's going to uh, exist for, um, for, for all users and to expand them uh, for current use. And I think that that's a really um, interesting and, and good way to think about this. It's, it's, it's a conceptual framework for what our consultants can do. So I just want to say thank you for you being so thoughtful about saying there's all these different inputs. How can we get our vision and our desires out there while also being inclusive of many other people who maybe aren't using the pool yet? So anyway, I just wanted to say thanks for that. And I think that this is a really good step forward. I just, I just want to take a, a second to uh, address a couple things uh, regarding the pool issue more broadly, um, and especially regarding the, the comments today. Um, one of the emails that I received in the past was that uh, the group is trying not to be adversarial and not to speak at so many council meetings that we shudder when we see your faces in the audience. Uh, you know, I really want to communicate, and I, I think that I can speak on behalf of the entire council, but I will not uh, do so in this moment, that that will never happen. Uh, you know, we, 
democracy, everyone up here understands, is a very messy thing. It takes time for people to figure out uh, as, as you guys have developed your strategies for communication with us. But I, I really want it to be understood that, you know, we are not your adversaries in, in this uh, decision-making process. And that, uh, you know, certainly myself, I very much appreciate uh, the advocacies uh, or the advocacy that you have uh, among other people in the community have brought to, to this council. So I want to thank you for that um, on my own behalf. In addition to that, just kind of speaking to a few of the comments, um, you know, with reg I, I wrote down four main points. Um, honoring the legacy. Uh, this one line I just really liked, big water in the oak savanna, uh, and we want to be at the table as well as we need to meet current needs. I really don't find any of that stuff disagreeable. Uh, so, you know, just, just sharing that to, to this point, uh, you know, again, saying that I continue to appreciate your advocacy, um, whether it's early advocacy or not, it's all going to be messy all the time. So thank you for being here and being willing to uh, wade through whatever that is with us. <laughs> so thank you. Well, I, too, uh, want to thank everyone for coming and speaking. Um, one, one thought that I had with regard to the big water in the Oak Savannah, uh, which I think is an interesting way of thinking about City Park Pool, there's also a concept... Um, called forest bathing. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, you know, going to uh, experience, you know, the health benefits of simply bathing in the forests. And uh, I think City Park Pool, in a way, is an interesting uh, expression of that idea where you're actually in the water, not walking through Hickory Hill Park necessarily, but it's forest bathing nevertheless. Um, there are a couple of things regarding the contract that I, I do want to talk about, uh, and I am happy that there there now have, have been included some open house opportunities with the um, conceptual design phase, uh, which consists of, um, you know, in describing the proposal, um, a community expo type experience where participants move from station to station to inform their responses on an overall feedback worksheet. I, I would like to, to suggest that we could amend this, this the language here. Uh, what, I, what I would really like to see, and it's in part based on my own experience working on projects like this, is that after the expo type experience, uh, we would have a uh, basically a community comment period where people would have an opportunity to speak and be heard as well as listen to the comments uh, and, and concerns of those in attendance. So everyone at that meeting uh, would, would have an opportunity to hear the various perspectives that might come from such a process. Um, I'm a huge fan of Jane Jacobs, you know, the famous city, city activist urban planner from New York City who said that cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. I, I really feel that should be the, the way we approach this project, that uh, everyone be heard uh, by everyone else so that we have a better understanding of where we're all coming from. I'm concerned that with the focus groups, which are more kind of internally oriented, uh, we need some balance there. We need, we need for people to not only sort of, you know, join together with their like-minded folks, but also hear what other perspectives are in an in-person format. So that would be one suggestion I would make to um, amend the contract would be to add that language that, you know, after the expo type experience, a community comment period shall be held for all in attendance the community comment period would be presided over by a professional facilitator who would summarize the public comments. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then the, the second does have to do with the facility condition assessment phase. Um, I, I feel it would be prudent for a couple of reasons to um, consider having that work done by an independent engineer. Um, you know, 
one, it would, I think, address any lingering concerns we have about the influence uh, that working on both the, the facility assessment and the design phase, um, you know, would, could, could take place if, if they were all under the same contract. Uh, the second is that it would be an independent um, engineer, someone who would be new to the project. Some of the um, part, members of that consultant team were involved in the earlier st phase study as well. So this would bring uh, a, new, a new perspective from an independent source uh, doing that facility condition assessment. So, so I, would, I would ask you to consider uh, the two changes. One, adding the community comment period as I was describing and then Secondly, that we delete uh, from the scope of services the facility condition assessment phase uh, and give that to an independent source. I think speaking to um, the first uh, proposal to, uh, I, as I understand, amend the contract to add a, a deliberate, basically public forum, uh, I, I think that's a good idea. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do that or wouldn't want to do that. I think it just makes sense, but rather than just having people come to a room and look at stuff, we should probably get their feedback in a, in a you know, well-documented, concise way and allow them to share it openly and honestly and also hear the feedback of other people. Uh, I think that that's also something that's valuable that you don't get to really see. Um, if people are just filling out a survey, like, oh, what do other people think? Oh, I'm concerned about that, too. I didn't think about that. There's, I think there's value there. I'm not doubting that there's value, um, but I think we're one in the data. Um, first. First. Mm -hmm. And then once we, you know, hear both what the cost is based on the data mm -hmm. to repair the current or, you know, now we're going to move towards replacement. I think that's where we get that information. Um, one, I want to say, um, happy to know that we're at this part where we're going to be looking at, um, you know, do we replace or do we, um, you know, uh, kind of repair, you know, what we currently have. And so I feel this the ne the next appropriate step. Um, I want to uh, thank everybody for coming out. Uh, we heard you loud and clear. Um, and I appreciated um, the love and the expressions of hope um, that you all have for, one, your city, but also for this park and for swimming. Uh, I personally am not an, uh, um, a confident swimmer. I can get to the edge if it's not wide water. Um, and I was in the water yesterday. But I'm a life jacket type deep water swimmer. And so one thing I will say as we're moving into who can, will experience this pool, I understand um, you know, the need for some things such as uh, laps and all that other stuff. But this is our only pool that is outside. Um, in our community. And when I think of some of the communities that are there, certainly we want to, want to make sure that they feel welcomed and, and, and uh, can come into whatever is developed. But how I would dare us to dream a little bit of how we can get other communities, um, people that aren't confident with water, but it's the summer when that's open. How can we get them engaged and interested to coming to something? And so I would just encourage us not to um, be fully in. Uh, um, uh, I would encourage us to dream a little bit and to figure out how can we make sure that there are other people that aren't swimmers, aren't confident swimmers, to come and experience life um, changing um, opportunities just with the physical exercise. Um, and so I would encourage us to just to make sure that as we're moving forward, to dream a little bit as well. I appreciate all the words that were said today. And I'm going to support this as it is. I do understand. I, I will tell you that uh, the valid, uh, the comments that were made about, um, you know, concerns about, you know, the current people being, um, 
you know, not persuaded, you know, um, if they're the same ones that is doing phase one and phase two. I get that. I hear it. Um, it can be a real thing. Um, I'm going to put my trust and hope in that this community words have been loud and clear um, on what they're hoping for, uh, which is really someone to come in and, and looking at this uh, without their own agenda and giving us an honest opinion on what they see. And so that's what I'm going to put my hope um, and trust in. And I know as a community, uh, we will hear more um, of what the needs are and we'll move forward. Uh, hopefully, no, we're going to move forward in unity. So thank you all for being here today. I also want to thank everyone for continuing to stick with the process. I know that the engagement has been messy and difficult, and but I agree with Councillor Dunn that uh, it is what we signed up for. And, uh, you know, it, it is nice when we can kind of turn that corner and get to that point of like, okay, we do feel heard and know that, yeah, none of us, nobody knows how this works. I say that all the time. Nobody knows how this works, and it feels like we should be able to lead something that's not quite as painful. So thank you for sticking with it. I also want to just address the comments about the um, proposed changes to the contract. I think, and I just want staff to kind of check me on this, but this contract, the whole scope is under $100,000. This is really the, you know, if we move past phase one of this contract into phase two of this contract, it is not the complete design from which the pool will be built. And so that will be an additional RFP process and will be a much larger scope in terms of the financial investment of the city and we'll really get into the details. So I feel confident that what the um, what's proposed here as far as the level of engagement makes sense for the scope that we're doing and if we move to phase two of this contract we know that after that will be much larger I guess that's true even if we just go with the repair there'll be a much larger um, actual you know schematics and architectural design and that kind of thing so just to make sure everyone understands that there's will be continued process after that point point. Um, and then also I think something that probably all of you have learned during this process is that you can continue to provide input and comment and you know whether that's one-on-one -on -one or in these meetings or via email letter text anything um, and that all counts and so even if uh, a particular phase of the very structured public engagement if that doesn't seem satisfactory to you then keep pushing keep reaching out you know I think we can really that is something that the community builds, the community provides. So don't be put off if a particular event or way in which feedback is collected, if that doesn't feel like enough, I think now you you know all have a really good template for continuing to engage and to provide that input. So I'm comfortable with this as it is. And I think, um, you know, I also know that our city attorneys have reviewed this contract and I guess I'll just put you on the spot, Eric, any concerns with a conflict of interest relating to the phase one and phase two well, I guess I'm less qualified to address that. Um, I, I think you know comments have been made about professionalism and so forth and um, reputation to a consultant who is seen to be putting their thumbs on the scale um, later, and I think that carries a lot of weight in the field. Um, also, as been as has been mentioned, you know this will be coming back to you to council at a public meeting where others can comment um, after phase one, and so if there's any you know, appearance that the data has sometimes, I think the data is largely objective. There is, of course, a recommendation at the end by the consultant to say, based on this data, which I'm showing you, and this data, which I'm showing you, renovate and repair, my professional recommendation is to do one of those two. Uh, and then proceed to uh, phase uh, B uh, of the scope of services of the contract. Again, all in full public view. There is one clarification I want to make, and that's in the consultant agreement in one of the whereas clauses. It indicates that the city intends to amend the agreement to include design, bidding, and construction phase services once the final scope of the project has been determined. Now again, that's something that would have to be done, but the uh, resolution uh, empowers the city manager to amend the contract as needed. So I, I do want to be completely transparent about that part of it. Um, there will be additional steps in public input, of course, as we go through the way, but it's not uh, crystal clear to me based on this contract that it'll be a brand new RFP or, or, or something like that when we get to the design phase. 
whether that's renovation or replacement. Thank you for that. Okay. All right. I think we're ready for. I was just going to, not a 10 else to add, other than just to also add my gratitude to all of the community members who have been wanting to uh, share their voices and their perspectives on this. At the end of the day, we'll end up with, uh, you know, I think we all want to end up with a really good city park pool that will last for years and years to come, whatever repair or replace that looks like. Um, I think that's a shared goal that we all have. And then just working out these details in a process like this with multiple, almost a shotgun approach to getting that in. Put, um, if it requires to move to phase two, um, I think is something that, that I was actually really happy to see the combination of open house, focus group meetings, um, surveys, and then of course the public meetings in which, you know, as, as you all are now very familiar and comfortable with, you can give us that, that feedback that we need to hear up here on council. So also supporting it for those reasons. Great. Well, we're going to take roll call here in a second, but I want to say thanks to all everyone that came. Even if you didn't speak, we saw you represented. So thanks again. Roll call, please. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Teague? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Alter? Yes. Most of them passes seven to zero. And thanks again. All right. We're going to move on to items 11A. Mayor? Uh, can we get a motion to accept correspondence? Absolutely. Can I get a motion to accept correspondence? So moved. Alter. Second, second. done. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Move by alter. Seconded by done because it was a little more louder. Yeah. Um, yeah. All in Hold favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? In the middle. Motion passes seven to zero. Eleven A, announcement of vacancies new, Planning and Zoning Commission one vacancy to fill an unexpired term, upon appointment through July thirtieth, twenty twenty six, Parks and Recreation Commission one vacancy to fill an unexpired term, upon appointment through December thirty first, twenty twenty three, applications must be received by five p.m. Tuesday, July twenty fifth, twenty twenty three. Can I get a motion to accept correspondence? So moved. Done. Second, Burgess. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes, seven to zero. Now announcements of, of vacancies previous, 12A, is Ad Hoc Truth and Reconciliation Commission, two vacancies to fill an unexpired term upon appointment through December 31st, 2024. Human Rights Commission, one vacancy to fill an unexpired term. Applications must be received by 5 p.m. Monday, July 3rd, 2023. Historic Preservation Commission, East College Street, one vacancy to fill an unexpired term. Historic Preservation Commission, Jefferson Street, one vacancy to fill a three-year term. Historic Preservation Commission, Northside, one vacancy to fill a three-year term. Historic Preservation Commission, Woodlawn Avenue, one vacancy to fill an unexpired term. Vacancies will remain open until filled. And now we're at item number 13, City Council Information. Probably everyone will say, what a great weekend. Yes. <laughs> Last weekend. So I'll leave it at that. Yes. I'll just mention, because we won't be meeting next till July 11th. 11. Uh, the weekend just prior to that, I think it's the 8th and the 9th, um, I submitted for the Open Gardens Tour, which is sponsored by Project Green, uh, North, Side, North, North Market Square Park. Um, which is our park in the north side. So it will be you know, public park uh, on the Open Gardens tour. So I'll be there uh, from 4 to 8 p.m. on Saturday and 10 to 2 p.m. on Sunday. So drop by, say hello. <laughs> um, it's, those are really fun events. Um, it's kind of, hopefully the weather will be nice. Uh, as I was saying to Sean before the meeting, it's kind of nice that it's not the middle of the day because you'd never quite, you can get hammered weather-wise um, in the mid-afternoon sun. So early in the morning and later in the <coughs> evening. Come on by. I was uh, trying to find the uh, diversity market mm -hmm. dates, but I know we're going to be. It is that. Uh, the starts on the 8th. Yeah, starts it starts on July 8th. 8th. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and we're going to have six weeks. <clears throat> Sounds right. 
Yeah, going to be six weeks. So that's going to be coming up this weekend. It's going to be the downtown, Iowa City downtown block party. Um, it would encourage people to come out to that. It's Saturday starting at 5 p.m., I believe. So lots of fun this weekend was awesome and amazing. Um, of course, our city our city celebrates Juneteenth, as, and it's also a federal holiday. So there are lots of events uh, surrounding that, and Pride was off the chains once again this year. Um, so that was really good. And a reminder that we're not going to be meeting um, the first Tuesday of next month, but we're going to meet the second Tuesday on July 11th. And that'll be the only meeting that we'll have for council meeting in July. All right, we'll move on to items number 14 and we'll get reports from our city manager's office. Mayor, I'd like to take a moment just to kind of catch the council up on some of our activities with our underestimated uh, and um, entrepreneur support um, grant program. So uh, as you may know uh, already, and maybe the public uh, hasn't heard, but we've had 31 um, applicants uh, that put in requests uh, for a total of $25 million. Uh, and so uh, we have $4 million to work with, uh, so our task is a little daunting. So our committee's been meeting diligently. Uh, we have uh, actually um, focused on the physical space uh, request first, uh, understanding that those are likely going to be the ones that need more resources. So we wanted to kind of get those out of the way uh, to begin with. We, we knew... Uh, I noticed there's a lot of similarities in, in many of uh, the applicants that we received. Um, some of the high ranking, more uh, um, 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 common themes were in uh, business and, uh, and life coaching. Um, the next highest one was incubators and accelerators, uh, and not surprising, um, also was community kitchen. Uh, was we we had uh, several there, um, as well as education workshops, and there were some others. But those were the ones that ranked up real really high. Um, and so we we sat down and and looked at um, and visited with uh, eight um, different. Um, um, proposals and um, I think our next steps is going to bring to bring them together and have a round table uh, with the uh, idea of uh, focusing on uh, the potential for uh, feasible partnerships um, and see if, if those things can come together into some type of uh, a joint uh, process that uh, we could then uh, get behind and bring before council um, and so uh, we'll probably wind up doing the same thing uh, for the uh, business support activities. And there's also several uh, similar um, um, uh, themes in the business support activities as well that will probably uh, mimic um, some of the very same steps that we've done uh, initially. So just wanted to kind of share that with you. I know uh, that's uh, been been out there a little bit and just wanted to let you know that there's been some, some diligent work going on in that effort and trying to, to kind of get this down so that we can have something for you in the next um, several weeks, so I would imagine. Thank you. That's all I have. Great. Our city attorney's office. Uh, nothing for me tonight. Thank you, Mayor. All right. City clerk's office. I just wanted to say thank you to our cable division. If you haven't noticed the new projector and you can actually see it with the lights on oh. Oh. Uh, and should be a much better picture on our live stream. Great. So, so. Great. Awesome. We're at item number 15. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved by Burgess, seconded by Harmson. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.